next. Uh, the SDLP in North Belfast demanding that the Social Development Minister Nelson McCausland spends more on social housing. They say many homes there are fit, unfit for human habitation. Now, Dolores Kelly's uh, put the flag up the mast on this one, if you'll excuse uh, that uh, uh, attribution. We're going to hear from her in a moment or two. But a housing group has carried out a survey of residents in the New Lodge district. It doesn't make for happy reading. We sent our reporter Claire Savage up there this morning and she was taken on a tour by one of the group's researchers. My name is Sean Brady. I work with participation in practice of rights, supporting residents in the New Lodge and Wider North Belfast campaign for housing rights. We're just coming into the new lodge now, the Seven Towers High Rise Complex in the new lodge is uh, the biggest housing development of its kind on the island of Ireland. There are 380 units here and it was thrown up in the 50s, fairly shoddily built at the time, probably seen as desirable residence though. We're just going to get out here um, once we park and you're going to tell me a wee bit more about why this is a place where it's not exactly a des res. Okay, we're going to get out. Okay, Sean, so we've just got out. We're right kind of, I suppose, in the, the middle of the Seven Towers. Just describe to me the area here. They're dilapidated in many ways, and the surveys that we do with residents have found that, that many of the residents are experiencing problems with heat, uh, cold, freezing temperatures, drafts, you know, seals on the doors and the windows. Down, it's a very, it's a very blustery day today. I mean, wonder what it's like yeah, for some well, people living here. you imagine, for instance, this flat here, Q, uh, who lives on the 12th floor with his three children, he would be feeling the cold today. And many people will be familiar with the new lodge. It was on the news a couple of years ago when a certain pop star came to visit. Yeah, that's right. Rihanna was in one of the tar blocks here. She was actually over here in Maeve House. One of the residents involved in some of the research had given her his flat for the day when she had done the, the song. And he's having problems there. Don't like all of the residents, they, they all experience fairly similar problems and structural problems. The damp, the mould, the heating system, the coldness in the winter times. Particularly now, we can feel it out here today, and you're talking about the same temperature inside, and the heat those properties are costing upwards of 40, 40 pounds a week. Those type of things and those type of issues are those that have been impacting on the residents for years. And one of your uh, residents, she's a single mum with three kids, and she's expecting a fourth child. Well, these are just, uh, you can see the maisonettes here in the distance, also a high raise. Arlene, she was put into the maisonettes took it as her first offer, offer moved and offered her mother's team. She's not been on the housing waiting list well over a year, and now the flat that she lived in has been condemned with asbestos, had no heating system from the start when she moved in, and despite the fact of a very vocal apology from the housing executive, she's now back living on her mother's city and searching for her home again. So that's some of the problem. I mean, that'd be indicative of the problems faced by people on the housing waiting list all of the time in, in, in this area. The, the problem is that the homes are not being built to serve the needs of the residents and to serve the needs of the population. There's a real variety of housing here. Thank you for taking me for a walk around here this morning. What would you like to say to anyone that might be listening that may have some authority on, on or maybe might be able to help the residents here? I think my call is the same as the residents. I mean, build the houses where they're needed. Will you identify a need, build based on that need. What needs to happen with the tower blocks themselves is that they either need to fix them to a standard that's acceptable or build housing for the people who are living there. And in our last survey found there were 170 children um, in this area and in the Harbourview area living in high-rise accommodation. That's not fit for in the 21st century. I'll repeat the co comment of the Children's Commissioner. You know, it's not, it's not right that people are living in those conditions in the 21st century. And I think that it's, it's high time that there's a strategy to tackle the inequality in housing in North Belfast. The call yesterday, Blue Monday. I'd say every Monday's a Blue Monday when you've been living all week with damp on the walls and, and the wallpaper peeling off because of it, or the electrics being destroyed because of the water running down through the walls, or the heating system not working all weekend, or the asthma and bronchitis and COPD that some of the kids are having to live with, and all of the other associated health issues. I think that would lead to a Blue Monday every Monday. Sean taking our reporter Claire Savage round the new lodge Well, the SDLP's social development spokesperson Dolores Kelly is in our Stormont studio. Um, you believe that this just wouldn't be acceptable anywhere else Dolores Kelly. What kind of response are you getting uh, to the complaints that you and others have been making? 
Well, Wendy, you talked about uh, 17 or 18 million being returned in that monitoring round. This actually was about 50 million returned last year from housing. And uh, people are quite appalled and uh, uh, some are unsurprised as to some of the reasons why the housing waiting lists are as long as they are within North Belfast. Uh, it's some years now from the Girdwood site, which is 27 acres, was gifted to DSD. And uh, because I tabled a number of questions recently, I've discovered uh, that uh, the DSD had applied for uh, uh, planning permission for some houses, which they're trying to squeeze on a very small portion of that site. And the uh, minister, uh, Nelson McCausland, has reduced the number of houses on that site from the 220, which was proposed by Alex Atwood and Margaret Ritchie down to 60. So there have to be questions raised as to why money's being returned at a time whenever uh, people are, are in dire housing stress and have been for several years, when there's a, a gift horse, if you like, uh, available to the minister to build houses and a construction industry that hasn't seen any real improvement in terms of its uh, lift from a recession. You say in your statement on this, Catholics in need of housing are being discriminated against. Now, the minister sent us a statement. He says he does not accept the accusations of religious discrimination in housing and that you're using statistics selectively. Well, the minister is, uh, is not uh, facing up to the reality of the situation. Uh, the housing executive itself back in 2012 uh, identified that 95% of the housing need in North Belfast alone was in the Catholic community. Before Christmas and during the recess, uh, Nelson McCausland issued a strategy called uh, Strengthening Communities, which was to spend monies uh, within six areas of uh, uh, particularly the, Bel the Greater Belfast area, uh, I think two of which are in his own constituency and primarily within the Loyalist community, even though their needs are different. There are needs for actually urban regeneration, but not actually need uh, to this anywhere near the same level level in relation to housing. And in fact, Wendy, I have lodged a complaint with the Equality Commission in relation to uh, that particular strategy, which was not subject to a full equality impact assessment. Uh, the minister is, of course, an elected representative in that area. And uh, he, I think, is, uh, seems to be, to me to, and to many observers within that area, more concerned about uh, what uh, the impact would be electorally and indeed in relation to some parade, some are even saying uh, if houses were to be built uh, according to objective need. So we're very disappointed uh, by the minister's response and his so do, uh, do denial. You, do you of, believe of that, that, that he's choosing where houses are built so that he gets so, so that it's a, it's a sort of social engineering? Is that what you're suggesting? Well, well Wendy, that's not just uh, what I'm beginning to understand, but certainly it is what uh, many people and many uh, independent observers and there's a complete denial of Section 75 equality. And, you know, there, there is a, a level of uh, political accountability around the executive table. We're seeing deals done between parties, but we haven't seen deals that are done on the basis of objective need and for the benefit of constituents as a whole. Okay. And that's something that this executive needs to get uh, its act together on. And Dolores Kelly, thanks very much indeed. Uh, someone's texted to say, I live in the new lodge in an old house. It disgusts me that McCausland hands money back, yet pretends that there's no problem, yet spills houses. In loyalist areas, that comes from uh, someone who signs themselves RC. Uh, the minister said he's publicly and consistently highlighted the need to build more homes and improve housing conditions in North Belfast. His department has, through the housing executive, invested substantial sums in North Belfast over the last decade, including building new social homes to meet housing need. And he says the department's not had sight of the results of the survey by North Belfast residents entitled The Human Impact, so cannot comment specifically. 81771 for your views or indeed 